Hi everyone, I hope you're well this morning. As you come in, can you just jump in the chat and let's get the conversation started. Let me know where you're joining us from today. We will get started in a couple of minutes. We'll just give everyone an opportunity to um, join us. So please do jump in the chat and let me know where you're joining us from today. Right, so we've got Sydney, Australia, perfect. Singapore. Where else are you all joining us from today? Melbourne, Melbourne, perfect. Yeah, lovely. Brisbane, a few more people from Sydney coming in. Two more people from Brisbane and Sydney. Oh, Brisbane and Sydney and Melbourne are popular locations today, but it's great to see a few international um, people joining us as well. Okay. Is um, just wanted to check, is the chat function all working? Um, do you have access to the chat function or is it just the question section that you have um, access to? If you could just drop a note either in the chat function um, or the Q&A and let me know whether or not you can access the chat function. We do try and make this um, session as engaging and interactive as we can. So it'd be great just to double check that you all have um, the functionality of the chat. Ah, chat is showing as disabled. Okay, um, we'll see if we can have a look at that in the background and get that fixed. Um, but yeah, for now, um, please feel free to just keep using the Q&A. Okay, we are going to get started. So thank you so much for joining me today I'd love you to just kind of have a think about what it is that you would like to get from today's session and pop that in um, the Q&A section while we're working on the chat so today we're talking about resumes and cover letters and how to really sell your story through your application so let me know what it is that you are looking for, what you want to get from today's session. So I can try and make sure that we cover those off as I go through the presentation I have prepared today. We'd also love you um, to get social with us. So please, um, you know, find us on our Instagram and also join our community. Um, you can post that you're here today, you can take a picture and post that you're here today on Instagram or just kind of share your experiences with us as we go through as well. We have a fair bit to cover um, this morning, but I will do my best to keep it just under the hour so you can all get back on with your day. So we've got five agenda items to go through together today. So we're going to talk about why do you need a cover letter and how it impacts your chances of securing an interview. We're going to look at a six part framework to crafting a standout cover letter. We're going to go through how to highlight your skills and experience in your resume and how to craft achievement based job summaries to make you shine. So how to write those bullet points, how to write that stuff under your experience section to really make it stand out in um, your resume. And then we're going to go through some common mistakes that 
I see quite a lot in cover letters and resumes. So they're things that you can avoid through your application process. So why do you need a cover letter and how it impacts your chances of securing an interview? So there's a lot of different thought um, if you follow many different people on LinkedIn, as I'm sure you do if you're going through your job search, there's always a really healthy debate around cover letters. Should you have them? Should you shouldn't have them? What is the value of them? So I have done some research and found some numbers to really drive home, hopefully, the importance or the positive impact having a cover letter can have on your applications. 83% of hiring managers say cover letters are important for their hiring decision. A further 83% claim that they would interview a candidate with a great cover letter, even if their resume isn't up to par. So if your resume is a little bit off and you've got a really good cover letter, 83% of hiring managers would still invite you for an interview. 74% of recruitment decision makers prefer to receive, receive job applications, which include a cover letter as part of their application. And even if submitting a cover letter is optional, 70%, 77% of recruiters will give preference to candidates who did send in that cover letter. And then 72% of recruiters still expect cover letters, even if the job ad states they're optional. So they're just some numbers around cover letters and hopefully um, really highlight to you, although there is still quite a healthy debate around whether we should have one or whether we shouldn't have one, the people making hiring decisions like seeing cover letters they do put some weight on them as they go through the applications that they get in and they will still if your resume isn't up to par and that was the one I loved the most that if your resume isn't up to par but you've got a really good cover letter you're still likely to get um, that phone screen or invited in for an interview um, so just some things to keep in mind if you're weighing up whether or not you want to send in a cover letter or you just want to send across uh, your resume for the applications that you are making. So why is a cover letter important? So in a cover letter, you can explain your motivation for joining a company, describing your career objectives. So you can talk about, well, what is it you're trying to achieve? Where are you going? So especially if you're going through career transition, like most of our students and graduates um, who um, do come on a journey with Academy XI, they're going through career transition. So your cover letter gives you the opportunity to talk through that, explain that, explain your past experience and where you're going and what your objective is, what you were trying to achieve. So it starts to answer questions about oh, last week you were a veterinarian nurse and now you're applying for a UX UI role. Why is that? What is that transition? And you, in your cover letter, you can start answering those potential objections that may come up. Explaining the reason for changing your career, explaining any employment gaps. So if you've taken time out of your career, you can use your cover letter to cover that off and give some people some context around that. And highlighting professional achievements as well so if you've got stuff in your career that you're really proud of you can really make those shine and stand out throughout your cover letter as well so just finally on why do you need a cover letter so it gives you the ability to introduce yourself first impressions really matter Highlight your written communication skills. So uh, right now with the change in technology and what, what we now have access to, um, there has actually been a drop in people's written communication skills ability. And if you can write a really strong cover letter, it shows an employer that you have strong written skills as well. So it just adds another thing to, oh, we can actually see, see this person's skill set. It, so if writing is going to be an important part of your role, writing a cover letter shows this person knows how to write a letter um, because 
unfortunately at the moment more often than not people coming out of high school it, it's not a skill that was as strong as what it used to be and then it creates connection between your unique experience skill and qualifications and the position so i'll talk about this in a little bit later but when you apply for a role you have a position description um, so you've got the job advert or you have a position description depending on what's available to you and through your cover letter and your resume you can use that job description or position description as a kind of marking criteria so if you think about when you were at school and you were writing essays there were set things you had to kind of talk to the points they highlight in their position description and um, job adverts are the points that you're going to talk to in your cover letter so it gives you the ability to link all of your skills your experience your unique value what you bring directly to what they are asking for so you can make that match for them so they're not having to scratch their heads thinking oh how does this fit together you're telling them how you fit into that role and what value you are going to bring to it so just to close out kind of this section of why cover letters cover letters are not optional um, you've seen the stats you've seen what hiring managers um, and people making recruitment decisions say about cover letters and how they do impact your chances of securing an interview so they are not optional regardless of what you may hear out there with the ongoing debate around cover letters um, that is some real value in having one as part of your application process, especially if you are going through a career transition. So I have pulled together a real, what I like to think, a very simple six part framework to help you craft a standout cover letter. And I'm hoping this is going to be easy for you to follow. If you have any questions, drop them in. I'm happy to answer them as we go where I can. And if not, I will come back to them at the end. So um, please do keep chatting and asking me what, what's going on. And if you have any questions about what I've said. So the first paragraph, all right, of your cover letter. Step one, you have to have a really impactful opening. The next paragraph going to be all about your experience okay so you've got your impactful opening and then your experience and then paragraph three is your skills and that's how your skills align to the job okay so you're not talking about irrelevant skills talking about the skills that are required for the job achievements so if you have anything that you have achieved in your career that is irrelevant to the job in which you're applying for you are going to talk about it. You are going to um, stand up and shout out loud how you've done something amazing. And I know sometimes that can be a little bit challenging for ourselves to kind of say, oh my God, I'm amazing. I did this really good thing. Um, but this isn't a time to be shy um, in your cover letter. So the fourth paragraph is your achievements. Your fifth paragraph is your why, okay? Why are you applying for this organization? So this is less about the role in which you're applying for but more about the organization what is it about that organization that you love what is it about their values so you would have done some research into their organization what is it about their business why do you want to work for them um, so if you are applying for a ux ui role for example what is the difference between one organization to the other why is it their business you want to be a ux ui designer in so do some, do some research on the companies you're applying for, find a few things that you really love about them, what they've been doing, and tell them about it. Say that you love what they're doing in X space and you feel this really aligns with your values. Find your why for their organization. And then finally, your final paragraph is gonna be a really strong closing couple of lines. Um, or which is going to make it really clear that they are going to call you okay so that's that's the sixth part so you start with your impactful opening your second paragraph is your experience your skills achievements your why and your strong closer and you do this all within a one page word document okay so these aren't 
really long paragraphs, you're not writing an essay, it's a one pager. So what do I mean by an impactful opening? So you're gonna have, um, as you know, I don't wanna teach you how to suck eggs, but you're gonna have your formatting at the top. So, um, you know, you're gonna have your date, who you're writing to, potentially the address of the organization. So you're gonna have a formal letter header, and then you're gonna have your opening. So you're gonna have your dear, what is their name, okay? Who are you writing to? Um, gone are the days where it's okay to write to whom it may concern. Um, generally speaking, we can find out who is recruiting. So if you're applying for a role via LinkedIn, you might be able to, sometimes it will say on the advert who posted the advert, use their name. If it has later down in the advert, who to contact or who to reach out for, for more information, use that person's name. So do as much um, digging around as you can to try and make your cover letter personal. If you really can't find the individual's name in which you should be addressing your letter to, dear hiring manager is fine, but do do a little bit of research into who you should be addressing your letter to. And now it's, I don't want you to spend hours and hours trolling the internet trying to find the right person. Um, give yourself five, 10 minutes to have a quick look at the advert, a quick look on LinkedIn and see if you can find out who is the person that is gonna be reading your cover letter and your resume and use their name. And then um, as your subject line, you're gonna have the position title and the company. Okay, so quite more often than not, a hiring manager or a HR professional or an internal recruiter is going to be hiring for more than one position at a time. So don't leave them guessing what position you are applying for. So make it very clear, pop in that subject line, what position it is that you are applying for. And then you're going to start simply as it says on here. So my name is, you're going to insert it. I am a product manager professional. So what is your profession? This is just an example that might not be your profession. What is your profession um, with recent experience in visual branding and design? So what is your experience? So really quickly, you can see how short that sentence is. Um, and then this is my formal application for, you're gonna insert the role name again and the company name. Upon seeing this vacancy as advertised, what platform did you see it advertised on? Was it Seek? Was it Indeed? Was it LinkedIn? Was it on their company homepage? Um, are they an organization that's using Twitter? Did you see it on Twitter or Instagram? Tell them how you've come across the role. If you've been referred, so if you know someone that already works at this organization and you've been referred to it, you can say, upon talking to, insert their name, I was really interested to hear that you are currently seeking and pop in the title of the role, okay? So make, make them know where, where you're coming from. Um, and if you do have a name that you can drop for a referral, pop that in this kind of opening section in your letter. So the next section is your experience. So depending on where you're at in your career, okay, depends on how this section is going to go. So if you've been, as this example is about a product manager, um, if you've been in a product management role for a number of years, you put through my X years working career, I've demonstrated a history of working in teams to deliver highly customer focused designs, okay. Now, this information that kind of says highly customer focused design, you're going to draw that from the advert or the position description. Now, you're not going to lie about your experience. You're not going to use words from the position description that don't suit your work experience. But if there is stuff that you can pull over that what they're looking for into this paragraph, so using their terminology and using their language that does actually suit your experience, this is where you are going to put it, okay? You're going to put it in this section. And if you are going through a co 
career transition. So two different kind of ways of doing this. You can have the block paragraph if you want, or I began my career with graphic design and marketing where I, what did you do? Highlight your transferable skills, okay? So in this section, it's talking about what is it from your past experience that is unique to you that adds value to this new role, this new profession that you are applying for. So make it really clear for the person reading your cover letter and your resume, how your past experience actually adds value to the role you are now applying for. And you can do that either in a paragraph format or you can use bullet points. Don't be afraid of using bullet points in your cover letter if that is your preferred writing style. And then part three is your skills. So as mentioned above, um, I have X years of experience in the industry. My most recent workplace was um, that has developed my, and then this has a list of different skills. But again, you would get these skills from the position description, from that job, job advert. What skills do they want to see you have? And again, make sure they are skills you actually have. Don't just pop them in because that's what they're asking for and talk about them, make them personal, make them connect to what you've done in the past, okay? And then your fourth section is your achievements. So in July, 2022, I was honored with receiving a UX leader of the year through Women Digital 2022 National Awards. If you have awards, if you have accolades, pop them in your cover letter. If you don't have any, that is absolutely fine. You can leave this section out, but if you have them, put them in. Share, shout from the rooftops or what you have achieved. Um, but if you don't have them, just leave this section out. It's absolutely fine. And then the fifth section, your why, okay? So through friends and family who have worked within your organization, I have heard that the customer, I've heard the customer focus and workplace culture is very positive and fulfilling. I want to be part of a company that values delivering high standards of service and enables staff to participate in such a rewarding industry. I love to love my work and pride myself on my contributions to a positive uh, and productive workplace culture. So this section, like I said, this is the why, and this is all about them as a business, okay? Yes, you can kind of drift a little bit in there around what the role may be. So if you are going into UX UI, um, you know, this is talking about in here, um, having a focus on customers and contributing um, to products as well. So think about why you wanna work with them. What is unique about their business that really appeals to you and tell them why you like it and what you're gonna bring to that, what you're going to add um, to their culture. And then finally, in your cover letter, it is a really strong close, okay? So I would enjoy having the opportunity to talk with you about this position and how my skills could be used to benefit your organization. Thank you for taking the time to read my application and I look forward to hearing from you soon. So it's not I hope to hear from you soon, is I look forward to hearing from you soon. So it's making that assumption. You are gonna hear from them. So you're telling them that you are going to hear from them, okay? So that's what I mean by a really strong close. And then obviously finish it off with kind regards and your name. Again, I know your name is already at the top of your letter, but do close it out as a formal letter. And there you have it. That is the six part formula um, to writing a standout cover letter. 
Um, one question has come through. So it seems like there's a lot of information that needs to be put into a cover letter. How does one keep it under one to two pages? So that's about being really articulate and keeping it short and to the point. You want to ensure that you are only sharing a relevant information um, that kind of helps that, all right? So relevant information is all you need to share in your cover letter. So yes, it's six paragraphs, but the first one and the bottom one are really quite small, one or well, two to three lines each, and it's the middle sections around your skills and experience that are the slightly bigger paragraphs. Um, and it is possible to have a really impactful cover letter um, just in that one page. And I do recommend that you keep it to that one page, okay? Formatting, um, before we move on, just a final thing um, to think about when you are um, writing your cover letter. So first impressions matter, okay? Um, so match your font styles to your resume. So don't use a completely different font, a different font color and a different font size in your cover letter to what you've got in your resume. Make them consistent. So this is about your personal branding, okay? So when someone sees something from you, you want it to make sense. You want it to look like you, to feel like you as much as you can. So you need it to be consistent. Proofread your cover letters. So spec check for spelling and grammar, okay, along the way. Um, I am terrible at proofreading my own work. I can proofread others. Um, so if you're like me where proofreading is not your strong point for your own work, um, ask a friend or a family member, whoever you live with, um, to proofread that cover letter for you. If you are part of the Academy XI community already, um, you can reach out to me and the career support team and we can help you proofread those for you. So if you're part of our community, we can help you with that as well. But if you're not part of our community at this stage, reach out um, to a buddy and ask them to give it a quick once over before you send it off. Um, be short and to the point. If you can say it in less words, use less words, okay? This isn't a time to, um, it's not your life memoirs, right? It's not a time to be really wordy. If you can say something in less words, use it. And like I said, don't be afraid to use bullet points in your cover letters and be consistent again with your resume formatting. Um, I can't drive that home enough. Be consistent in your formatting. So um, i going to take a quick breath. I've shared a lot. Um, I hope that's kind of helped you with your cover letters and you've got something there. You've got something out of it. And you think, oh, I wasn't putting that in my cover letter. Well, I'm going to change this slightly for next time. We're now going to move on to how to highlight your skills and experience in your resume. So skills and experiences so key skills you're going to have a section generally speaking on your resume that talks about your key skills now you can do this in several different ways you can have a list of skills and you can split them out into soft skills hard skills technical skills or you can have five to six skill areas and do them kind of in sentences and link them all together so soft skills you possess, possess like adaptability, decision making, empathy, communication. And you can combine the soft skills with more tangible ones as well if you want to. And also core skills that are relevant to your application. So the skills in which you share on your resume, again, you want them to be relevant to what is in that position description what is in um, that job advert? So what are core skills? And that's the question that's just come through. So these are the skills in which you possess that link to the job that you are applying for. So it could be presentation skills, stakeholder management, um, your sales skills, your design skills, 
it's those types of things that are relevant to your industry and things that you have. So here are just some examples popping up on your screen now. So relationship building and stakeholder management um, and problem solving skills. So these are some examples of skills and experiences um, that you can add to your resume if they are relevant to the job in which you are applying for. And these may change on your resume, okay? Your skills may change depending on the job that you're applying for. Um, so try and match them up. Um, also move them around. So if you have them in a section, in like a bullet point section, um, and you know, you've got, um, trying to think, uh, Adobe um, as a technical skill, but you've got it at the bottom of the list, but on the job advert, it's um, one of the first things they mention you should have. Swap it around and pull it to the top of your list. So it's a really clear, it's there. Someone's not having to go digging around for it in your resume trying to find, oh, do they have this? Um, sometimes you may move them around depending on how that job advert is written. Uh, would one reference skill verbatim to the job advert? Yeah, you can do, you absolutely can do. So only if you have those skills, okay? So that, again, this isn't about embellishing our experience, um, but if we do have those skills, they're in the job advert that they are asking for, put them on your resume, show them that you have those skills. Um, and we'll talk about this a bit later in terms of our achievement-based bullet points, but sometimes we might also be able to weave in the skills that are asking for in the way in which we explain our past roles. So they don't necessarily all have to be in the skills area. If we can weave them into our past experience, our history, like work experience section, um, we can do that as well. So there is two ways um, of increasing the number of skills we're talking about on our resume. So job summaries, what are they, okay? So a job summary is placed in the career history or the career experience section of your resume to give an overview and insight of your experience, capabilities and achievements. So this is a bit where you kind of have um, your job title, the company name and the dates in which you worked for that organization. And then underneath it, you have your job summary. It is not a list of tasks you performed. It requires a lot more than that, okay? I don't want your daily to-do list on your resume. Um, I don't want to know, um, like, you know, those day-to-day -day tasks. I want a summary. I want to know what you can achieve and what you can do, um, not a simple you know, you, you made the tea and coffee. We don't, we don't want that kind of task list on your resume if we can help it, okay? The general rule of thumb is six to uh, four to six bullet points um, for your current role and four to five points for your previous role. Only relevant points, not repeating responsibilities, okay? So under, in your each job section, kind of those four to six bullet points under each um, that highlight what you have been doing and what you have been achieving. But again, trying to make those bullet points as relevant to the position in which you were applying for as possible. So it may start be, you know, if you're going through a career transition and your past experience is a completely different industry and a completely different role, look at your past experience with your new industry, your new role lens on how can you talk to what you used to do in a way that makes it relevant to what you are now applying for. And demonstrate your capability through the use of tangible evidence, such as statistics, if you have them, um, figures, timeframes, budgets, 
This is a powerful way to increase the impact and meaning for hiring managers and recruiters. Okay, um, just questions come through. Is there a recommended page range for how many pages your resume should be? One to two pages, two pages, absolute maximum, okay? Um, depending on how much experience you have, um, try your best to fit it into one page. But if you do have a lot of relevant experience to add and you are adding value with that page two, um, have the page two but only if you are adding value. So as we said for the cover letters, if you can say it in less words, say it in less words, okay? So what, four to six points per role maximum. Identify what parts of your current role are relevant to the roles you are applying for. And if, like I said, if you're in career transition, this is where you might need to start looking at your current or past experience with a slightly different lens to what you have in the past. Identify achievements that you can highlight in your job summaries. Tasks are important, especially if relevant to the role you're applying for but don't just leave it at the tasks. Demonstrate when or how you performed that task, okay? If you have a 10 word sentence that can be said in four, reduce it. Um, job summary points are often fragmented sentences, which is fine, okay? Um, don't get bogged down in providing context. Um, that is not relevant and content that is not relevant um, to what you need to have on your resume. And avoid jargon and slang, even if it is industry relevant. This is because the audience may be a generous recruiter who does not have the same knowledge of the jargon that you do. So more often than not, it is potentially a generalist HR manager or a generalist recruiter that has a large recruiting portfolio that is reading your resume. And that's the industries that they're or the roles that they're um, recruiting for, they might not be absolute specialists in. Um, so make it really easy for them to know what you're saying. So avoid um, that technical jargon and slang that is industry relevant to you in your resume. Okay, so structuring a job summary point is an important aspect to consider when drafting your re um, resume. Um, unfortunately, it is very rarely done well, okay? But after this session, hopefully you're all gonna be able to make amazing um, bullet points on your resume. Understanding and mastering this will lift your resume and be more engaging to the reader. And this formula will help you craft excellent, impact, impactful points. Um, and we've just got a question come through saying, how many years do we go back? Um, 10 to 15, um, absolute max. Um, generally speaking, I'd say the last 10 years, is enough, um, but depending on kind of the career trajectory you've had and where you're going, um, that is kind of, you know, 10, 10 ish years. Do you have to be specific with dates? Um, so, in terms of your experience and when you work for certain organizations, I would be. I would be. You don't necessarily need to put dates on your education. But in terms of your work experience, I would, you don't need to put the day, but the month and the year to the month and the year. So how you um, do your job summaries, going to go down our little road together. So you're going to start with an action verb. And then you're going to demonstrate by how, when, what. And then you're gonna move into the outcome. So this is how every bullet point, ideally on your resume, is going to be structured. So you're gonna start with the action verb, then you're gonna demonstrate the how, what, when, 
and then you're going to talk about the outcome of that action. So action verbs describes your strengths through demonstrating your capability. It paints a picture in the hiring manager's so recruiter's mind for them actually doing the thing, okay? Use positive words with intent to describe your achievements in is powerful in your job summary. It also stops you falling back into that task list trap that so often catches us out. And then these are just some examples of some action verbs. So kind of the beginning of that sentence. So delivered, negotiate, processed, improved, converted, created, accelerated. So these are just some words that you can start. That What is the first word you're going to use at the start of your first bullet point on your resume? And these are some that you can definitely use to help you get started. Um, there's many more out there, but think about action verbs. How can you start that bullet point? Tangible evidence. Okay, so what is tangible evidence? Now, we don't always have numbers. It's amazing when we do. Um, if we can say we increased um, sales by 30% in the first six months of us in a role. That's amazing, okay, when we can say that. But we don't always have the statistic. We don't always have the number. But there is always an outcome of what we've done. There is always a reason why we did something. So if you don't have a number, that is fine. If you have a number, use it. But always think, well, why did I do that? What did that achieve? What did it enable? What did it help? And how your reader. These are just some tangible kind of examples. So on your screen that you could use, you know, depending on your experience, but it's just to give you some ideas of how you can write these job summaries and what you can use. So like I said, you might not always have numbers. So the information is not essential for every single job summary point and can be difficult to come up with in sometimes. But at least two points should really cover off that kind of tangible evidence if you can. When used in summary, it provides measurable insight. So it's almost like the proof of what you did. And it gives perspective. I can't talk. It gives perspective on your level of responsibilities and capabilities as well. So here's just a nice little example. So improve the overall UI of the website by making informed, user-focused changes, which increase the total engagement time of visitors to the site by thirty percent as an example. So you've got your action verb in there, which is the improved. You've got your summary point. You've got your how, what, when, and you've got your tangible evidence. But also, um, if you read it carefully, you're showing someone another one of your skills, informed user-focused changes. Um, so you're showing someone that you can understand the users you might have potentially done some user research and you can take that information and implement it in a way that improves the organization and here's just you know verb summary point tangible evidence how when what so some final thoughts on our job summaries remember this is a guide and it's designed to help you to ensure you avoid that task list trap. You won't always have the information to hand and that is okay. You have the knowledge and ability to make informed decisions about what you put in your resume. It is your choice what you put in your resume. So be 
um, succinct around why you are sharing what you are sharing. Be purposeful in what you are putting on your resume. And the less words, the better. And we're just gonna, um, we're not finished. We are getting to the end and we're gonna do Q and A as well in a minute. Um, I've got a few more slides to go through. So like I said, I wanted to talk about some common mistakes to avoid, but we're just gonna pop a survey link in the chat. And I would absolutely love if you could spend some time going through that survey and giving us some feedback on today. What did you get from today? What do you wanna see in future chats that we do around kind of your career transition, resume applications? What more do you want me to talk to you about? So do take the time to do that. And um, one of my colleagues is going to pop that link to the feedback survey in the chat now for all of you. And we're gonna continue talking about common mistakes to avoid in our cover letters and resumes, okay? Not tailoring your cover letter and resume, a massive mistake I see all the time, kind of having this standard cover letter and resume that you shoot off to everyone. Now, you can have a template, you, you can build out, you can do most of the pre work up front, and then it's just learning how to quickly tailor stuff in. Yes, it can seem daunting. Oh my gosh, tailoring a cover letter and resume to every application can feel like it's going to be a really time consuming task. But the more you do it, the quicker you will get at it. And you can really do it in 10 minutes. Um, it doesn't have to be something that takes you hours and hours. It may take a little while the first couple of times you do it. But the more um, succinct you get in the skills and experience you're sharing, um, through your applications and the more familiar you get with reading position descriptions and job adverts, the quicker that process will come. So it's like with anything, um, with practice makes progress. So yes, the first couple may take you a while, but you will get start to be able to do them really quite quickly. Um, so they don't have to be that time consuming. Regurgitating your resume or the job description in your cover letter, okay? We, we wanna add value, we wanna give additional information. Cover letters are there to answer potentially any red flags or questions, trying to preempt, okay, if someone saw my resume, I'm applying for this role, what, what might be their objections to interviewing me? What might be their objections to hiring me? And doing your best to cover those off in a really subtle way in your cover letter. So it's not about repeating what information you're already giving. It's about adding context and flavor and color to the picture that you're painting for the person seeing your application. Too wordy or sharing too much detail. Um, incorrect contact details. Um, you will be surprised the amount of times um, I have in the past received resumes and I have gone to um, try and call someone and they've given me their wrong phone number or their email address is slightly wonky. So double check. I know it sounds really, really basic, um, but it is the real simple stuff that seems to catch people out. So do double check all of your contact details that you have on your cover letter and your resume. Now, like I said, get social with us. We, we shared this at the beginning. We'd love you to join us on our social media um, and share your journey, share what you took from today with us. That would be amazing. And I'm gonna open up to any questions. So does anyone have anything they would like to ask? Any comments? Anything that I didn't cover off that you were hoping that we were gonna talk about today? Um, so I'm just going to have a quick look in the um, questions tab that we've got here. So most of my relevant work was done 10 plus years ago. That's absolutely fine. So if most of your relevant work was 10 plus years ago, I know I said, um, you know, share the last 10 years of experience, but think about the role in which you're applying for. You want to share 
the most relevant experience for the role in which you are currently applying for. So you may want to think about doing a functional resume over a chronological resume. So a chronological resume is where you go through in order of roles that you've had generally start at the most recent and go back for you your most relevant experience for the roles in which you are currently applying for or a while ago, you may want to do some research and look into what a functional resume is that may be the better path for you to go down um, over the kind of more standard chronological resume. Um, okay, another question that's come through here. I heard that hiring managers use a program that sort through cover letters and resume based on words used on the job advert. Does this mean we have to structure our letters and resumes to exactly match the sentences in the job advertisement? No. <laughs> um, so this is, this is talking about ATSs. Um, ATSs will sometimes um, pick out key words. Um, generally speaking, um, an ATS, so it's a candidate tracking system, the auto rejections that kind of come out are from the questions you get asked. So sometimes when you apply for a role online, you'll get sent into a portal and it will ask you how many years of experience you have and it will have a drop down or it will ask you if you have Australian work rights and it will have a drop down, yes, no. And that is where potentially the auto rejection stuff comes from. In terms of scanning for keywords, yes, 100% ATSs can do that, but that doesn't mean you need to match sentences exactly, okay? Yes, you might want to use certain words. So um, the Adobe suite has changed its names many a times, and some organizations are still calling it, you know, by the old name. So check, make sure that you're using the terminology they are using. Well, I don't want you cutting and pasting sentences out of position descriptions or job adverts. So keywords are important, um, but they're not the be all and end all. And there is always a human um, at the end of that application process. There is always a recruiter or a hiring manager or a HR professional that will see your resume. Um, so focus less on kind of the technology and more on the value in which you are sharing. Okay, and the next one is regurgitating information from CV to LinkedIn in portfolio, okay or not okay? Um, yeah, it is okay. Um, so what you don't want to do is you don't want to have a cover letter that regurgitates the same information that's on your resume because that is about um, adding value. Your cover letter should be adding value. It should be adding context, texture, flavor to your resume. Um, in LinkedIn, you have a lot more space, actually. You can use a lot more words. So you want to be really succinct in your cover letter and resume. You know, one page cover letter, um, one to two page resume, where LinkedIn, you'll have an ability to share a lot more information. So um, they should align. Your LinkedIn experience should align with your resume, but you definitely have the ability to add a lot more on your LinkedIn profile if you choose to. Some companies have automated systems where one has to input their information onto their site. This also includes uploading resume and cover letters. Is it okay to copy and paste information to the pre-filled boxes on their automated system. So yeah, this is the um, ATSs again. So this is a candidate tracking system. Um, and yeah, so if you go in through a system and you upload your resume and cover letter, the system will, generally speaking, try to pull out your information like your name and um, your contact details and your work experience. When it is unable to do that, it will ask you to input that information um, manually um, and yes at that stage you you want it to match what you've popped in your cover letter and your resume you don't want to raise another flag okay um, you don't want them to be thinking oh but they they put something different um, in their actual document resume so depending on the format and how you've made your resume 
not all ATS systems can read all formats. Um, the safest bet is generally Word converted into PDF, and then that's when it should be able to pre-populate um, that information itself. Um, if you use a different one, I know quite a lot of academy grads will use Figma to showcase their Figma skills, which is an amazing thing to do, but sometimes ATSs just can't work with that. Um, so yes, um, copy the information over is absolutely fine. I think it's the point I'm trying to get to and just being mindful of sometimes the programs we use to make our resumes don't always align with what um, the ATS want in the background. But like I said, there is always a person at the end of that recruitment process. Um, I have a huge variety of occupations and jobs, many of them being temporary, casual, and a few of them being long-term. I have kept getting feedback that I'm not demonstrating commitment or loyalty or even seriously, seriously uh, pursuing a goal. Um, so you got a bit of a choppy resume. Um, don't worry, I have one of those too. So it's about focusing on well, what information is relevant to share for the job in which you are applying for. And it is getting more and more common for people to have more choppy kind of resumes um, than what we've seen in previous generations. There's the gig economy, so people take on short-term contracts. Um, also people, um, you know, change roles for progression because they don't get it within their organization. So it is becoming more and more relevant. So I would worry less um, about that. I understand that kind of that's the feedback you're getting. With that feedback, really think about the role in which you're applying for and what information are you sharing on your resume, on your cover letter. And if you know their objections, cover them off in your cover letter talk to it call it out and say you know i know my resume may look like but i am now looking for this is what i want um how could i better describe my work experience when transitioning into a new career having only project experience at academy and not actual work experience knowing that i'm um, competing for a position against others that may have actual work experience. Um, okay, so um, I don't know what course you've done at Academy, but if you've done a UX UI course, um, you 100% have real experience. You are working with real clients. You have a real problem statement. Um, so they're mini sprints. You do have real life work experience. So you're not working off a case study when you study with Academy XI, you get a real life work experience. It's a real problem that you are solving through your studies. You are presenting it to stakeholders and to the organization and they go on and implement it, generally speaking. So you do like you do have real experience. Is there a preferred resume template that we should be using? Um, no, resumes are highly personal. Um, I have a few templates that are my go-to, but they're my go-to because I like them. Word has a whole bunch of different templates you can use. So just find something that you feel authentically demonstrates you. I am contacted by several companies through LinkedIn to apply for jobs for them. They say that they find my experience and profile very interesting. However, once I send my CV, I'm not contacted again. My CV matches what I have on my LinkedIn. So I don't know what could be wrong. Any tips for CVs as well? Um, that's an interesting one. Um, so lots of recruiters use LinkedIn to do cold reach out. If your LinkedIn profile is matching your CV and they've said from your LinkedIn profile that you have interesting experience. I don't really know in that kind of space what's going on. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those recruiters saying that to you. I would potentially, you know, you've got their name, you've got their recruit, you've got the recruiter's name, you know what organization they work for. Give them a call. 
um, and say, hey, thanks ever so much for messaging me on LinkedIn. I understand you're interested in my skills and experience. I'd love to know a bit more about the role and have a chat with them on the phone. Um, how do I write about the two, three year gap that occurred after Pat? Okay. Um, if you have gaps in your resume, you don't necessarily need to call it out too much. So you could just pop um, career gap and just put the time that you were on career gap. You don't necessarily need to explain it. If you're finding that through your application process, you are getting objections, um, then if you feel comfortable, talk to it in your cover letter. Should your resume and cover letter also visually match your portfolio? Yes, if you can, because this is all about your branding, okay? So I'm guessing you're a UX UI. Um, this is about your personal branding. So yes, if you can make it all consistent, so no matter what someone clicks on when it's about you, it looks the same. So um, if your resume, cover letter, and portfolio use the same font, the same font colors, um, the same coloring. Sometimes people put headers and things on their resumes and their cover letters. And then also flow that through to your LinkedIn. So you'll have a LinkedIn banner, use the same style, use the same coloring as what you're doing um, on other documentation that people are coming across as part of your application. I think I answered all of the questions. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure um, spending this last hour with you. We're one minute past the hour. I hope you took something away from today's session and that it is going to, you've got something that you can do differently to help with your applications. If you are part of the Academy um, community, please do feel free to reach out to me. Um, the recording will be available, I believe, tomorrow. Um, if you haven't already, scroll back up in the chat and um, click on that survey link and give us some feedback. That would be incredible. I would love to hear um, your feedback from today's session and also let me know all what else you would like me to talk about. Um, so if there's some things with your application process or your job search that you're struggling with, uh, let me know because we are doing these um, every two months. So there will be some more coming. So just let me know what you would like us to talk to. Enjoy the rest of your days and good luck um, with securing your dream job. It's been a pleasure going through cover letters and resumes with you today.